Welcome in everybody to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P. Joe P is a PN. It's week 15 in the NFL. We continue to cook here over at Betting Pros to help us look through the favorite lines, the favorite sides. For this week in the NFL, of course, is Andrew Erickson, the undertaker himself. And, of course, our good pal Scott Bogman, our man about town when it comes to bowl season. By the way, Boggs, how are you managing all the bowls this year in the college football space? How many have you bet on so far? Uh, you know, just a couple. Uh, <laughs> I like to do them as they come up. I mean, you, you can't. <clears throat> I find it hard to bet this far out because of the transfer portal and mm -hmm. the opt outs and all that stuff. So I'd like to get a little closer to kickoff. So just a couple for this weekend. OK, a so couple far. for this so weekend. Just there a couple go. tickets. Now, the yeah, real yeah. question is, Andrew Erickson, I know that you will be following some of the college football content here on the channel. I know throughout the year you've placed some of those bets. Anything already popping for you in bowl season? I know we're talking college on the NFL show, but still, it's fun. It's football. I mean, the only things I have tickets for are Michigan to win the there national championship. I also have a ticket on Texas because I had a ticket on Oklahoma State to win the Big 12, so I hedged against that, <clears throat> Texas. So I got Texas and Michigan, so we'll see where that uh, that plays out. Beautiful. When hedging pays off, you got to love it, everybody. All right, now, if you want a chance <laughs> to win a one-year free premium upgrade to Betting Pros, the best betting tools on the planet, drop your comments below, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's it. That's all you got to do. We gave away one last week uh, to our good pal, Curtis. So Curtis, congrats. You're the big winner, Curtis Brooks. But uh, we want to give one to you. So drop your comments below. Tell us what you're in on this week, your favorite picks of the week. You just might win yourself a free premium upgrade, which is going to pay for itself. Well, it's free, so it already pays for itself, but it's going to be a nice thing. Trust me, nice things for everybody. That's what the holidays are all about. Gentlemen, let's kick things off here. Scott Bobman, why don't you take us through your first pick of the week for week 15? Let's lay the points for Atlanta minus three at Carolina. And these are two of the worst teams against the spread in the league, but they did play in week one. And that was one of only four games that the Falcons have covered this season. And look, just in this game, they have way more to play for after dropping that game against Tampa at home last week. And while they may have lost, they showed an ability to move the ball vertically as uh, Ritter had 347 yards a season high and only his second game with 40 or more attempts. I wouldn't usually care because the Bucks defense is a mess, right? So it's like, OK, well, Atlanta threw, but it was against Tampa Bay. But it's not like Carolina is any, any better. They've been bad all year. The Panthers uh, stats against the run are OK, but they grade out 28th against the run on PFF, 29th in tackling. Could be a big day for Bijan and Algier. And the fact that they moved the ball vertically last week makes me think this team on offense is going to put up some points against this bad Carolina D. And I just don't think Carolina can score. There's so no give incentive me the, for the Carolina yeah. Uh, other side. They shouldn't anyway. want to win this game. But not only know, that, no should so. I want to win it, but they, there's no incentive for me to bet Carolina on an upset because I'm only getting plus 150. That's the best number right now. I'm betting pros I can right. get. You know, give me two to one, three to one even. Now I'm like, all right, well, maybe I'll make some money on this, but this was actually number 10 on my list this week for the best bets. Too for many that same upsets reason. last week. Well, no, they're not, not going to give you good odds this week. You know what it is, Boggs? I feel like I look at it and I say to myself, look, do I want to copy and paste Ritter's performance? No from last week, especially on the road. But at the same time, do I think they can win this game by three against the Carolina Panthers? I think the answer is yes. It's kind of unspectacular, unsexy, but it makes a lot of sense. You just kind of take the money and run with this one. Speaking of taking the running and running, uh, Andrew Erickson, what are you taking this week in week 15? Give me the Giants. Me Giants too. I, I mean, we I are in on the same the things this line. week, boys. I love it. Um, again, if you don't want to go on the money line, that's fine. But Giants plus six, like I, I hate the Saints. <laughs> so much like this team <laughs> is so overrated and this is this is my special stat right the saints have covered three games this year tommy devito has covered three games Whoa. in his last oh, three starts how you doing? like the saints are just one of these teams they've benefited from the easy schedule they've had all year long and yet they've taken zero advantage of it with Derek carr let's see what they've done they're on a seven game streak of failing to cover the spread after they've won a game so they're a good team to bet on against after they win they have failed to cover the spread in seven of their last home games, seven of their last eight home games. So they don't, there's no home field advantage for them playing in New Orleans. They failed to cover the spread in 11 of their last 13 games as a favorite. Like this team is so bad all over around in terms of the expectation that they come out with. So I've been waiting for them to just take on a team that not named the Panthers, where I can feel somewhat confident about like backing them against the Saints. 
And the Saints barely covered last week against the Carolina Panthers, one of the two teams that they've actually been able to cover against this season. So for me, looking at more of a matchup kind of based analysis, the Saints have been really bad against the run over the last couple of weeks, allowing the most rushing yards to running backs over the last four weeks. Who is the Giants' best player on offense? Saquon Barkley. They, they're able to run the football against the New Orleans Saints defense. And what's the other thing the Saints are really bad against? Mobile quarterbacks. What do we see Tommy DeVito do last hey, week? Man. He ran the ball with his legs. So not only are all the trends pointing to fading the Saints, but the matchup on paper from a football standpoint is that the Giants offense can actually move the ball against this defense. And when it comes to the Giants defense against the Saints offense, I have zero fear whatsoever of Derek Carr. And we've seen this Giants defense give better offenses fits at times this season. Blitz heavy. I think Derek Carr is going to crumble. Look, I think Giants plus six is the best bet, but Giants on the money line, I also don't. I've already bet it, so I'm just being transparent. <laughs> no, that's as have I. And uh, another one from my top 10 bets. Somebody's been watching my videos, I feel like. I feel like the guys are watching the videos a little bit here, but I just copy Joey. Just P's copy Joey videos P's. and then come hey, on here. And listen, like, bro. I, I am all. What a surprise! About. Joe picked his cousin to win a game. Hey, look. No one if is you don't pick your all. family, then what are you gonna do? You, how, how are you gonna look when you come <laughs> around for the holidays at Christmas? Come on. <laughs> By the way, my Tommy DeVito TikTok about his agent viral. It's all up there. Thousands and thousands of views. It's very funny. Go check it out. Fantasy Pro Joe on the TikTok. But seriously, like I'm with you, Eric. Is it 100%? Like, do I think that the Saints, you know, are going to win this game outright? No, I really don't. I I mean, this, the Giants are the money line plus 225 is very tempting, but I think that six is just like a lock and give it to the, me. The Saints were outgained by 100 <laughs> yards against the Panthers last year. Derek Carr they're not good. had thrown for less yeah. than 100 yards before the fourth quarter. I can't believe game. Jameis has not come in. Like, I know I, he's going to turn the ball over, but let him throw try, it downfield, yeah. for God's sake. Come on. And Bogman's going to laugh, but, you know, Boggs, a couple years ago, you remember when I was like, I like this DeVito kid over in Syracuse. I think he's a pretty good quarterback. And he's like, yeah. shut up, you idiot. You just like him because his <laughs> name ends in a vowel. And you know what? Yeah. Here he is playing for the Giants, doing things. Is there a quarterback controversy in New York? Boggs? No, Daniel Jones is still your dude. I don't think they have a quarterback. Still. <laughs> is that the yeah, controversy? Look, That's yeah, the controversy. I, I think I think Erickson is more right than that. But they pay they pay Danny Dimes. They're not gonna not they're not gonna let Tommy DeVito uh, take this huh? job. Maybe somebody, I don't a think lot of maybe, teams need quarterbacks. See, maybe somebody's knocking on the door for see, Danny. Daniel Dimes. Jones just needs to change his last name to DeVito, and then he'll get the Giants Danny back DeVito. on the wagon. Right there, you go. <laughs> there you go. That's all he needs. All right, Boggs. Let's go back to you for another pick for Week 15. What do you have? Well, look, um, I, I can eat crow when it's uh, when it's right in front of me, and I have to. Right. Uh, and we had the Dolphins uh, minus the points last week. I did, and look, in the fourth quarter, they got to a fourteen point or a thirteen point lead in this game, fourteen point lead because mm -hmm. Tennessee went for two after they scored that first one. But Will Levis turned it on and finally showed what he can do. And this was the Will Levis that we saw in um, 2021 with Kentucky and was pushing him to be a very high draft pick in the draft. Then in 2022, he kind of hid behind his line. He opted out of some games. He just didn't look the same. And he hasn't looked the same since until whatever clicked correctly mm -hmm. in that game against the Dolphins. And they are playing with momentum now. And Houston... We may not have C.J. Stroud. He's still in proto, so there's a good chance that he comes out. But even if he does, the Texans are still questionable about Nico Collins, who doesn't seem like he's going to play, Blake Cashman, Will Anderson, and Laramie Tunsil and Tavier Thomas, all starters on this team. The Titans did also have a lot of guys miss practice yesterday as well, but they played on Monday, so it's more likely that you know those guys are going to be able to come back. The Texans had been winning close games. They had a goal line stand against Denver to win. They stopped Houston. Um, uh, they stopped. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I think it was uh, someone. I wrote Houston on here. Obviously, they are Houston. But they stopped somebody on a fourth down late. Um, Maybe they, they kicked a walk off field goal. I often do that. I, 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 sometimes I just I'm my own worst enemy. You know. Uh, they they kicked a field goal against Cincy uh, to walk off and win. The Titans can sustain drives if they can sustain drives and pass the ball. Derrick Henry becomes unstoppable. You unlock a new Derrick Henry level if you can pass the ball and. They're getting the ball to Hopkins, who looks great. I, look, man, 
I don't like the Titans. They haven't played well this year. I think the roster is kind of thin, but Vrabel is one of the best coaches in the NFL. These teams are going in an opposite direction of each other right now. Houston is, um, you know, kind of fading down here in the stretch. They're a young team. They're very good, but I don't think they're putting it together right now. So give me Will Levis and give me the Titans on a heater. And, um, I think they're going to win this one, possibly going away, especially if CJ doesn't play. Boys, we are three for three so far. This also mm. made the best bets. I mean, it's, it's look, man, I think we're all in lockstep. We know where we are at this point. We know where we are in this no, juncture. No, it's just season. Erickson and I watching your videos. No, no, That's no. What it is. I, I think we know which teams are, you know, are really here. Uh, they're struggling towards the end. I think the Houston Texans... I don't want to say they ran out of gas a little bit, but it feels like they got a little bit exposed when they started to face some of the better teams out there a little bit as well. And stop the Cardinals. That's who it was, by the way. Yeah, there you go. I knew you'd find it eventually. I believe in you, Boggs. Uh, Also, don't forget, as you're trying to track all these games, make sure you're downloading the Betting Pros app, especially if you have iOS, you get three free days of premium. But we also have that game notifications feature so you can look at all the line alerts and the movements going for some of these games. So keep a close eye on that because this is one in particular where you might get, you know, if Stroud comes back, this line could move a little bit. I am not as optimistic that he is going to return for this one. We'll see. The quarterbacks have been getting cleared. I feel like a little bit easier than some of the position players. I don't want to be tinfoil hat lately, but it's still 25% chance, you know, in the same week that a guy comes back. We had that statistic earlier on another podcast from fantasy pros uh last week all right erickson let's bounce back to you here for week 15 give me another pick yeah no i'm just going to continue to ride the tennessee titans because guys they're they're playing at home like if you guys didn't know this like the titans uh play better at home than they do on the road four and one overall straight up in music city they've covered the spread in four of the last five home games at nissan stadium and the only time they failed to cover was their overtime loss against the colts which they were winning by three points in overtime so Essentially, they've been in every single game to cover the spread while playing in Tennessee. Their top 10 scoring offense at home. Um, so, again, I think that the Titans are in a position where they've been profitable to back at home. And you look at the Texans, they've just been a team that's been overvalued by the market all year long. Yeah, absolutely. Like once CJ Stroud like, had a big game, it was like everyone was obsessed with CJ Stroud just backing CJ Stroud because as good as his season they've had that they have had, they're six and five against the spread. Like they haven't really been like this team. It's like, oh yeah, they always cover. You know, they're really good as underdogs or as favorites. Like that not has not been the case. So I really think the move now is to wait, hope that Stroud does clear, and then take the better number on the Titans because that's ultimately how the lines are going to move just based on what we've seen from the market. The market loves Stroud. So if Stroud is going to play in this game, you're going to see money come in on the Texans, even though I would be going in the other direction. Going to be in those powder blues, too. That's It's weird to me that they wear the Oilers unis to play the Texans oh, when they're in Tennessee. That's obnoxious, It's like, it's like rubbing salt in the wound. That's yeah. kind of obnoxious. <laughs> I do love those old powder blues, though. I do they love look good. Old blues. I mean, the days of Haywood Jeffries and Warren Moon. Those were fun times back in my childhood. <laughs> do you know who that is? Erickson? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no. Okay. All right. Let's continue on here. Hey, to the- hey Jack. <laughs> Let's go back to Scott Bobkin for another pick. And I know this one probably rubs you the wrong way, but uh, you can't deny right now the Baltimore Ravens are kind of uh, arguably the class of the AFC. I'm going to say arguably in air quotes, but uh, certainly it seems like no one else wants to step up. You know what I like more than I hate the Ravens? (laughs) Money. I like money. I was going to say pie, but yeah, I was like, uh, well, look at me. Also, yes. So I know you like uh, pie. Absolutely. I do. I do like me some pie. You're a pie guy at the end of the day. Um, See, I'm a cake guy. Doesn't matter. Give look at me, Joe. I'm both. Come on. (laughs) I'm both too, but I cake if I have the if they're both there. I'm going to cake, especially the chocolate. But these are important questions. Um, you know what? I think I'm with you. So you unless go. it's key lime pie, then key lime pie wins. All right, but key lime guy. Let's, uh, look, I'm not going to hit you over the head with stats. Baltimore minus three against Jacksonville. Jacksonville is miserable right now. They cannot stop any sort of a passing game, um, even one that is a little weaker than it usually is without Mark Andrews. We saw Lamar toss the ball all over the field last week. Um, Jacksonville is bad. They're going in the wrong direction. They can't put up any runs rushing yards right now so you're going to go to a gimpy trevor lawrence and the ravens are going to run his ass down i don't think this is going to be a very fun game at all for jacksonville i think baltimore is going to wipe them out i think jacksonville is going in the wrong direction right now i do think this team is good but i think that 
Their coverage is so bad that it doesn't matter that Josh Allen has 13 and a half sacks. It doesn't matter that they're getting constant pressure on the quarterback, especially against a guy like Lamar who can scramble out of those sacks and run around. I think this is a huge mismatch defensively for the Jaguars and not many teams are scoring against Baltimore right now. So I don't know why this line is only three. It must be because it's in Jacksonville. I think Baltimore I think runs because away it's with this in game. Jacksonville, but also because at home last week, the Rams took them to overtime. And I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. So people get and understandably so people get a little cautious when it comes to the Ravens, whether they believe wholeheartedly. I would actually be looking at the Jags on this side of the game, but they're not at full strength. Lawrence is not full strength. They don't have Kirk. They're missing some other pieces. ETN has not been the running game ETN, has been trash. ETN recently has not been well. great. Too. You become one health. dimensional. He said, and that's a good secondary yeah. for Baltimore. Yeah, he's so. had health issues too. It's just it's a bad spot here. Like I said, normally this would be that perfect. You know, all Ravens are favored by three. Let's go take the Jags here when they go play to Jacksonville because you know we've seen that happen to the Ravens before many times. But in this one, I'm with you. I think I'm on that Ravens side. Yeah, the, too. the Ravens aren't a dominant team. Uh, I, I'll say that, but I do think they're the is best. Is there a team dominant in the AFC. team in the AFC? I don't think there no, is. No, there isn't. Why, no, why there do you think the Ravens aren't a dominant team? The Ravens well, aren't a dominant they, team. The Rams yeah. took them to overtime last week. That's why. Like the Rams come into town, and I, I respect Matthew Stafford and all. Mm. But if you I've are a the dominant Steelers team, beat Erickson. And okay, then you watch the Ravens also, beat. Yeah. No, you watch the Ravens beat themselves against the Steelers. Let's be okay. honest here. They did. Okay. The guys. Oh, they, but do okay, dominant but, teams but beat themselves? But the good teams Ravens don't do games, that. They beat yeah. themselves. Yes. But the good teams don't do that. So well, the good teams show up against the other good teams, which the Ravens always do. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Jags aren't a good team, so we'll see. You well, are you Ravens on the Jacksonville well. side here? Or are we? Are we uh, in disagreement? No, I'm on the Ravens. I mean, the Jaguars have a good record, so that they're they, a good team in my eyes. They are. They are a good team, but the way that secondary has been playing is miserable right now. I don't think they can stop anybody. So I think Lamar's like going to Lamar Jackson them. overs. Yeah, Erickson. I think there's only one dominant over. team in football right now. I think it's the 49ers. To be honest with you. Like, I think, and that's why I put money in and I talked about it again on the video this week. I'm like, look, now's the time to go in on the 49ers. It's, it's, it's as good as it's going to get probably if they keep winning games and they have that one seed and they have the two home games to get to the Super Bowl. Like, I don't see anybody in the NFC beating them in that scenario, which is the scenario that it's trending towards that. And then on the flip side, do I really see a true contender? Maybe the next couple of weeks, somebody will emerge and get hot in the AFC. And that becomes a very dangerous thing. But whoever that team is, not only do they have to be hot, then they have to carry it all the way through the playoffs and then against the 49ers, which I think is a lot to ask. I think it's very different. All it's right. Gonna be, it's going to be the Ravens. It's going to be Ravens. Ravens will lose against the 49ers in the regular season and they'll beat them in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. All right. Let's get to some strange things because uh, you uh, have some feelings about this Pittsburgh Steelers game. And Bobby, and you might have to have earmuffs for this one. Yeah, I'm taking the uh, I'm taking the Colts minus one and a half against the Steelers. Uh, they're playing at home. Colts have won for their last five games. And the thing that I noticed the most about the Colts is they're 100% against the spread as a favorite. So I was wrongly on them last week as I opened as a favorite against the Bengals and I continued to pound my chest for the Colts and then they became underdogs and I should have jumped off the bandwagon, but I did not. And that was bad. <laughs> so I'm not making the same mistake twice because they're still favorites here against the Steelers, even though TJ Watt has cleared the concussion protocol. The line actually moved after that was announced from minus two and a half to minus one and a half, which makes sense because Watt is one of the guys that actually does impact a defense in a game's outcome because of how impactful he is as a defensive player. But I, I still just like the Colts more at home. Again, 4-0 straight up and against the spread as a favorite. Like Shane Steichen is going to run circles around Mike Tomlin. Like from the two coaching perspectives, again, we talked about it from the Jack or the Titans and Texans, teams going in opposite directions. This Colts team, I think, is surging with their coaching staff with Shane Steichen, where Mike Tomlin, I think that after losing back-to-back games against teams with two wins, like, there are question marks, there's blame being thrown around, the receivers are complaining. I just don't like the juju around the Steelers right now, and I want to back the Colts at home. So, give me Indianapolis. Uh, Boggs, do you agree with that statement that he just laid out there, that uh, Shane Steichen is the superior football coach to Mike Tomlin? Uh, I mean, right now he probably is. I don't think it matters Oof. though. I mean, look, if, if you're going, if you're going with momentum, the Colts have it and the Steelers don't. So I completely understand this pick. Now look, watching the Steelers for 40 years, I will tell you that this is a Steelers devil magic game where for no reason they get two turnovers, just like they did against the Browns earlier this year. They had uh, two defensive touchdowns and ended up winning that game. Uh, I said this about the Rams game as well, and they ended up winning that. I kind of think this one is one where the Steelers out of nowhere for no reason 
uh, win it. It's just dumb. It's what happens with this team, and that's why they're always over 500. And at the end of the year, people go, this team is bad, but they won some of these surprising games. This could be one of them. I, you know, it shouldn't be at all. They look miserable. Like Erickson just said, right, they lost they just two lost miserable two, teams two weeks in a row. Two, two at home, miserable right. teams. They've been blueprinted. The mm-hmm. blueprint is throw the ball over the middle against them. Right. Trey McBride, Hunter Henry. And then you have Josh Downs plus all the good tight ends with the Colts. It seems fairly easy, but I'm telling you, Steelers devil magic. We'll see if it works. Steelers so. best number on betting pros is plus 110 over at Caesars. That's the best one I'm seeing on the money line. If you're into the devil magic. Uh, Boggs, you're into the devil magic. Let's talk about San Fran, Arizona. It's a big number. How do you feel about it? I mean, is there any way that the Niners don't put up 35 against the Cardinals defense? I don't see how they couldn't, you know. So what we're shocked. asking what we're asking in this game is that the Cardinals score twice or the Niners score a sixth touchdown, which wouldn't be that surprising. But um, so it, let's say the Niners put up 35. Two touchdowns. And since Kyler came back, they have scored at least 14 points in all four games they played, and they're averaging uh, just a shade under 20. The Niners are banged up on defense. They had a lot of DMPs on Wednesday. Armstead, Greenlaw, Hargrave, Shaverius Ward, Ambry Thomas, five starters, all did not practice. So they're probably going to be coming in there at less than 100%. The Cardinals are dead last in overall uh uh, defensive grade on PFF and run grade. They are 29th in pass rush, bottom 10 in coverage. I think the Niners put up at least 35. They scored 30 or more points in eight of 11 games this year uh, or eight of um, 13 games this year. So this is a team that is since that bye week, they are on a heater. Brock Purdy cannot miss. I think they're going to roll a bunch of points here. We're just asking the Cardinals to put up a couple there's a lot of injuries for the Niners, so I think this one is an easy cover. So uh, give me the over 47 and a half in San Francisco and Arizona. Yeah, I see that number you can get on Fandle right near minus 110 right now, and uh, I- I'm with you on that one as well. Now, Erickson, you're in on this game too, but from a different perspective, what is it? Well, I do like the over as well. Okay. Um, the Cardinals are 6-0 and towards the over at home this season. So all these games are shooting out, and it's the potential shootout environment that makes me think, 12 and a half points. We just saw the, the 49ers not cover a 13 point spread against the Drew Locke led Seahawks at home. Like, what are we doing here? Like this opened up at 14 and I'm like, guys, it's not Josh Dobbs. That's the quarterback. It's Kyler Murray, like 14 point dog at home. Like that's ridiculous. Like for a team that literally just did not cover a double digit spread against Drew Locke in the Seattle Seahawks. Like this is a divisional game. The Cardinals are coming off a bye week. And I just talked about how the Cardinals offense scores points at home. So, yes, I think that there's going to be points scored. The 49ers are going to win this game. But just to lock in that they're going to win by two touchdowns? Like, no, that's not going to happen. The Cardinals are 4-2 and two against the spread at home this season. Like, they've played significantly better in front of their home crowd. Coming off a of bye week. It's Kyler Murray. Like, this isn't some, like, bad quarterback or some backup. Like, he's an all-pro quarterback. Like, so I didn't understand this line when it came out. I'll always take double digits at home for underdogs, especially in the division, especially when it's Kyler Murray, and especially with a team coming off a of bye week. So this is just a process play for me. And I found that at least in the last couple of weeks that backing underdogs in shootouts has really been more profitable than not because when teams are, when no offense can be stopped, like the game is not going to be a blowout in one way or the other. Like it's going to be high scoring in more or less a close game. So I like the Cardinals plus 12 and a half. I'm not comfortable with the 12 and a half either way necessarily. So I'm just sticking with the over on this one, but you make a really good case. If anything, I'm leading towards you too, which is um, them covering this, uh, especially on the road there for San Francisco 49ers that the 12 is a little, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot for them to have to win by. It so. is. It, 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 again, it's like more of like yeah. a principal play of anything. It's just like, if you're going to give me 12 and a half points, at home and look arizona's not a good Murray, football like, team so i get it I, I mean i'm not saying the line is wrong i'm saying it's not tempting enough to me uh and it's so close to like if it was 14 i'd be right if this is well, 14 I, and a half I, again transparency i i jumped on it when it was a 14 right and like, when it was 14 and a half or 14 like that to me yes all the way on arizona now that's 12 and a half it's right on that borderline but i think to bogman's point that over is really interesting let's do one more from both of the boys here before we close out today's action Boggs, you've got a fun one for us, and uh, I like this. So this is a little three-way action you got going on? That's right. It's okay if it's in a three-way, and this is a three-way <laughs> 
team alt line parlay. This is you're moving this Denver line to six and a half plus six and a half at Detroit. The Giants plus seven and a half against the Saints and Atlanta minus one at Carolina. All of those games will give you a plus 333 juice. You're going to triple up your money. You're expanding those lines a little bit. You're getting plus money on two of those away teams. So I like this line a lot. And I believe my last three team, uh, oh, my last three away team alt line prop on this show hit as well. So um, well, let's ride that momentum. Let's yeah. go with that one. Let's ride, baby. As long as the Giants <laughs> are involved in this. Like, I'm all about it. All about the Giants mm -hmm. this week. I'm eating the cutlets. All right, let's go to you, Erickson. Close us out. You got one more to go. What is it? Well, we've got a game at Ford Field. Folks. Ah, so you know what that means. Over. <laughs> you know what that means, baby. Over. We're going over. Over at Ford Field. Look, four of the last line, well, four of the Lions' last five games have gone over. Uh, teams have averaged between Denver and the Lions have averaged 48 points scored. Lions' last 15 home games, average total has been 55 points. 87% of the games of those 15 home games have scored at least 50 points. One point. And I know that the Lions defense kind of looked like they were going to be a thing in the beginning of the season. Well, that's gone. Like that, yeah. that's totally gone. Like they reverted back to whose secondary is worse, <laughs> Erickson, Jacksonville or Detroit right now? It's, it's both pretty bad. Um, both I, I think horrible. Jacksonville had more injuries. Um, but yeah, no, they're both pretty horrible. What's funny, so, all of a sudden that week one matchup with perspective now. I mean, you know, you remember <laughs> when the opening night there with the Kansas City Chiefs lost and everyone's like, oh my goodness, look at how good the Lions are. Uh, maybe the Chiefs aren't that good. Maybe this yeah. is the Chiefs' problem. <laughs> <going on. laughs> the Chiefs also didn't have Travis Kelsey in that game either. That's and the true. Lions barely won. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just like the over in this spot, especially looking at Denver. Denver has played, now this will be their third straight game um, in a dome. So I, I think that we're going to see them have more success. They're coming off their best yardage total since week seven. You're starting to see Russ cook a little bit more. And I think that this is a particular matchup where the Denver Broncos are kind of forced to pass the ball more because Detroit can score points at home. Mm -hmm. So I like the over in this game. And I think that you could see even a big spot from like Jerry Judy, who kind of let us down last week. Courtland Sutton can't be stopped. He got Jerry Judy is a walking, week. living letdown. Let's just be honest what he is. Cortland oh. Sutton's the Let's man, Eric. Ten while, Toddy so. Cortland Sutton. That's that's who the man is. That's a that's all about the Cortland Sutton. You know. And besides the over the 47 and a half for Detroit Denver, Erickson's also in the Arizona plus 12 and a half against San Fran. Indy minus one and a half. Tennessee minus two and a half against Houston. And the Giants plus six over at New Orleans. Uh, then you've got on Bogman's side, Atlanta minus three against Carolina in Carolina. Tennessee two and a half, just like Erickson. They're both in on that one. Baltimore uh, and the three against Jacksonville. San Fran, Arizona over 47 and a half. And then Boggs has that very tasty away team alt line parlay. Whenever we do the alt lines, I think we have to put our flannel shirts on. Remember, it's the mid 90s here. Whenever we do the alternative stuff, <laughs> Denver plus six and a half, uh, New York Giants plus seven and a half, and Atlanta minus one uh, at Carolina. You put them all together, you get three to one basically. So go take care of that. Also, download the Betting Pros app. Make sure you drop your comments below and subscribe to our YouTube channel because you just might win yourself a one year free premium upgrade to the best betting tools on the planet to start betting smarter and not harder over here at Betting Pros, but more to the point we like to hear from all of you. So drop those comments. Tell us what your favorite play of the week is. I want to know. We all bet together. That's what we do here at Betting Pros. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for Scott Bogman and Andrew Erickson. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. <laughs>